Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to look at one of the scriptures on the end times. We're looking at the account of Isaiah 13. And the, the day of the Lord, there's a lot said about it. The Lord tried to warn us over and over again in different parts of the Bible. There's Daniel, there's Isaiah, there's Revelation, there's Matthew, there's Luke. There's so many different, there's Joel, there's, uh, I think, Zephaniah. Many, many different parts of the Bible, it mentions it. So about how that day, would, what it would look like, what to expect before the day and what would happen on the actual day. So we see that we're in the turn of the of such events. We're beginning to see um, so we're beginning to see so many things that point to the end end of end end, end of times. And uh, to, we know that later in a couple of hours, or would they say tomorrow, we're expecting to see the um, the blood moon, right, and the solar eclipse, and there's so many other things that are going to be uh, happening. So the question is, is this it? You know, we know we've had a few, a uh, couple of solar eclipses here and there, but for this particular one, it's it's unique. Like I shared with you guys earlier, it's unique because there's a many different things, almost six or seven events that are unusual that are taking place. Because of time, I'm not going to list uh, all of this, and uh, we've been talking about these things all day. Um, but maybe tomorrow we might pick up, God willing, right? <laughs> if the world doesn't come to an end tomorrow, we'll continue to discuss these things because. Um, I don't particularly know that the world is going to come to an end. The world is going to come to an end tomorrow because I think this science will take place first. But again, we can't rule that out because God says when you least expect, no one knows the day, the day or the hour. It doesn't say no one knows the season. Actually, the Bible encourages us to uh, watch for the seasons, look out for signs and things like that. And that's why we're paying attention. That's the main reason we're giving our attention to tomorrow um you know the expectations of all these different things that are going to be happening um some of them i might just mention a few some of them would require actually uh more detailed explanation and especially the scientific part of it but we know that we're expecting the solar eclipse and we know that the, there's going to be a plague of locusts uh, they're called cycadas or something like that and uh we know that CERN, they are going to do the, uh, some experiment, which I'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you guys on that. But we know that we have almost seven, like seven different things, which I'm, I'll probably itemize tomorrow that go, should be going on. And uh, from tomorrow, it seems like. All right. So, but I want us to pay uh, close attention to the one I really want to talk about, which is the solar eclipse. I believe that was mentioned here. But let me go just get right into the scripture. Lord, I just thank you for this time. I just pray this couple of minutes we have that the between the things we're going to read and the things you're going to give me the grace to highlight that these things would sit in our minds and we it's just for us to be to make sense of the things we're going to be seeing in the near future, which I sense and to be prepared. That's the bottom line to be prepared that I know as children of God. Um, there's no need for fear we're going to have to lean completely on you and we're going to live as you want us to live we're going to be live vigilant we're going to be ready to be enduring this time most importantly our hearts sold out for you walking in love walking in the fear of you honoring you and witnessing to people that we can witness to lord just give us the grace to just be ready that's the bottom i want to be ready at your coming and we want to be unafraid and unshakable and we thank you, Lord, for this grace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I'm going to read uh, Isaiah 13. I'm going to go to verse 2. I'm just going to jump to verse 2. It says, Lift up a banner on a barren hill, call out to them, signal with your hand, and they will go through the gates of the novels. I'm, I don't want to take time to explain what was going on there, but let's begin to look at verse 3. I have commanded my consecrated ones. Yes, I have called my warriors. This is the Lord saying, my warriors who celebrate my triumph okay those are like his angels his entourage in heaven he says to execute my wrath so these are the ones that are going to execute god's wrath he says listen a commotion on the mountains like that of a mighty people listen an opera amongst the kingdoms the nations being gathered together the lord of armies is mob mobilizing an army for war this is what is going to happen on the actual day of the lord 
They are coming from a distant land, from the Father's horizon, the Lord and the weapons of his wrath. The day of the Lord, this is what's going to happen. It's not going to be a fun day for the wicked. It's going to be a glorious day for the righteous, but it's going to be a day of wrath and judgment and fear and panic for the world. People are really, really going to freak out and it's going to be a justifiable freak out because this is now God's final judgment. And there's no repentance then. There's no turning around. There's no, oh, I'm sorry now. I realize myself. It will be too late, okay? But so this is the actual day of the Lord. Um, I believe that, yeah, it's going to talk about the actual day. And then it's also going to talk about things that should happen before the day, okay? And the things that should happen before the day, you'll find the accounts, like I said, in Matthew 24, Luke, I think it's 21, Revel, Book of Revelation in a couple of places. So let's just continue to read. I just want us to get really quick to where it starts talking about some of the signs we're going to see in the skies before the actual day of the Lord. It says, Well, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, everyone's hand, hands will become weak. It means you'll be so afraid that your hands will go numb, but weak. And every man will lose heart. Lose heart means really panicking, really fearful. They will be horrified. That's why we need to witness to people, okay? This is how people are going to be. Horrified is a strong word for fear. It's like terror. They will be horrified. Pain and agony will seize them. They will be in anguish like a woman in labor. The judgment then will be fierce. That's where we're going to see, you know, we sing gentle Jesus, you know, meek and my well, Jesus is not, he's going to come as a conqueror. Okay, it's not going to it's not going to be like how he's been coming when he was trying to walk with us and 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 he was open and saying, Hey, come love, you know, come and know me. I want intimacy. He's going to come now as a judge and to to, to show how much he hates sin. That's what that's what we're going to be seeing. So you know, you see all this fierceness, terrible day, horrible day, all these things he's saying is because of the judgment on sin. It will all the time it looks like the Lord was overlooking sin, he wasn't. It was just being patient. The Bible says he was being gracious and patient, not wanting any man to perish. So the whole time we say, aha, why did this person hurt this person and got away with it? Why should we forgive this person? And the Lord says, leave it, vengeance is mine. So this is that day where, where we're going to actually see the vengeance of the Lord. So all the times it looks like the Lord kept overlooking this person, treated, why did this person kill all these people and got away? It seemed like they got away with it. Why this and that? So that's the day that all of that judgment, we're going to start to see it on the day of the Lord. So verse 8, it says, the people will be horrified, pain and agony will seize them. They will be in anguish like a woman in labor. They, they will look at each other, their faces flushed with fear. Note that this is the wicked, people that have not honored God, people that have not walked in reverence of the Lord. They didn't care less. They didn't walk holy before him. They didn't walk in love. They didn't obey him. They went about things their own way. They loved pleasures. They loved sin. They were stubborn. They were rebellious. They were hard-hearted. These are the ones that will face this, all these things he's talking about, all these ter terrifying things. These are the ones that will experience it. Not people that their hearts are sold out for God, walked humbly before him, loved him, walked in love, obeyed his voice. Not people like that. It's for the wicked. Verse 9, look, look now. It says, look, the day of the Lord is coming. Cruel with rage and burning anger. When you see the Lord, anything burning anger with the Lord, that's not a good thing, okay? That's not a good thing. If you're in trouble with Satan, God will bail you out. If you're in trouble with God, who's going to help you? There's nobody more super... No, it's nobody. There's no... No, I mean, if Satan is tormenting somebody, you cry out to God, God will deliver you. If you... If now you're sinning against God, who's going to... Nobody can deliver you. Okay, so we don't want to be, we want to be, we want to be people that are, are walking uprightly with the Lord, are humble before God and obeying his voice. All right. Look, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with rage and burning anger to make the earth a desolation. The earth will be desolate, means empty, void, burnt down buildings. You Have you seen some of those videos I showed where nations were burnt with fire or during war devastation? That's how the whole world would be destroyed all the buildings destroyed everything destroyed there's a part that i said there'll be no human being so you see that you've gone you're gone with the lord in the uh, to glory or in the rapture or you're destroyed there'll be no single person every the whole place will be desolate everything you've seen fancy thing all this las vegas full of sin everything will be destroyed all those fancy buildings everything will be brought down all right so verse 10 indeed the stars i want us to begin to look here this is the one that the one that relates to what we're going to we expect to see tomorrow 
okay i believe that this is probably the final one because again we've seen some eclipses in the past i i personally think this might be the final one again because it's not just one event it's many many things pointing to that point and line up with what the bible has told us to expect when it's very very close to that day of the lord all right 10 indeed the stars of the sky and its constellation will not give their light okay so tomorrow maybe hope maybe we're going to see that and i think that when everything is darkened you're not even going to see the light and i'm also wondering there's a whole revelation you know some parts will say the stars will not give their light some will say the stars will fall there's a star a big star a comet or so i think they said it's going to fall or it's going to do something weird so it's not just the solar system there are many other the heavenly bodies there it seems like they're also going to do some unusual things all right it says the sun okay here we go it says uh the sun will be dark here we go for tomorrow when it rises and the moon will not shine so that's what we expect tomorrow where the the sun the uh, moon will be blocking the sun and, and i think i explained that to you before so it's it's like the moon the sun and the earth are lined up but basically the lord the, the sunshine will be blocked and the moon will be reflecting uh the, some light of the sun so it's going to look that's where we get the word blood moon okay and then because of that the whole earth will be dark and in our world we call it eclipse but that's what basically it's like that's what the bible is describing here the moon will not shine some places say the moon will turn red some people say the mo- some verses of the bible say the moon will be like blood verse 11 i will punish the world okay so this is what i'm saying is a sign of the end end because after this is a sign that okay god's judgment is coming it says i will punish the world for its evil this is after the 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 eclipse thing okay so if this is the final eclipse then we're going to see this except this is not the final but i really i really again i really sense it's the final one i will punish the world for its evil and wicked people for their iniquities you see that that's who he's punishing i will put an end to the pride of the arrogant so anyone that's arrogant or has pride that's why we don't want to be there in that camp okay he says god says i will humiliate the insolent insolent is rude person or tyrant insolence of tyrants bullies if we get bullies many there are so many things going on that you guys might not know but many many people are suffering many many people are suffering because of some of the things they're doing they are called some of the people that are in leadership these are the people is calling out god is calling out these people i'm going to judge all their sins all their hidden things all the injustices all the schemings all the people that plot sickness because some of many of this sickness like the one with the, the pan all those ones we just experienced many of those things people are people plot they, they cook up those things in the kingdom of darkness they cook it up they even they use science and all those things so all the wickedness car accidents sicknesses there are people that are in the demon realm that plan all those things the demons they walk with human beings they release those things to the earth and people think it's just life no those are not god's will that's in the demon world they are cooking up all those things god is going to judge all of that stuff verse 11 i will make a human oh this is the one i was saying he says listen i will make a human more scarce than fine gold that will be basically saying i'll wipe out the human race okay apart from those that love god and it says there'll be so it does think about it all the people we know be gone that don't fear the lord that's why it's very it's 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 very super imperative that we witness to people okay so it says human will be scarce it means everybody on the earth will be wiped out therefore will make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake from its foundations we're also hearing earthquakes another part of the bible you see it says there will be shaking in heaven and shaking on the earth we're already seeing earthquakes many i think the one in revelation says talks about earthquake even before this day that we saw earthquake before today we saw earthquake a few days ago we 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 heard about earthquakes so these are all signs that's another one i wanted to add there these are all signs of what will happen again i don't want to keep this long i'm going to wrap up there but it says there there will be shakings in the earth and shakings in the heavens okay and then at the wrath of the lord of army so what's and on the day of his burning anger i'm going to kind of stop here so what's the bottom line the bottom line is the time of the lord is near now if this is this i sense it, this could be it again because of a, com- a combination of different things going on that are aligned with the bible but even if this is not the final one you need we need to be alert we need to be vigilant we need to know that even for us to see this gravity of um, d- uh, d- uh, disasters 
unnatural happening signs and wonders it's a sign that it's very 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 close the war in israel the war in ukraine so many things going on earthquakes floods a lot of things are going on in the world right now famines plagues all these things many of all these things are the things the bible said to expect before the day of the lord so we know it's around the corner okay so what kind of people do we do we need to be we need to be holy we need to be vigilant we need to be alert we need to not be sleeping the bible says don't be sleeping so you don't be taken unawares sleeping means spiritually sleeping okay don't set your mind on the things of this world the bible admonishes us to come out of babylon come out of the world system okay set your mind on spiritual things start reprogramming i had to start reprogramming my mind from all the things that I, my heart and my mind was attached to pleasures and start putting them on god i think i'm sure you guys have seen that i had to read there were things i liked as a human being but as we see the day approaching you know this is serious and we just learned that uh we, we've learned that when that day comes you can't reverse it that's the only day you can't say oh please there's no please on that day you have all the time now to do please lord forgive me this is the time okay so let's pay attention let's get more in depth in the word more fervent with our relationship with the lord more deliberate living holy lives staying away from sin you can still have your joy you can still have your peace select the things that are fun for you make sure there are things that are aligned with the word of god that please god not sinful things if you find yourself sinning or stumbling repent right away keep pressing in asking the grace of the holy spirit that's what i do if i make a mistake i ask the holy spirit to help me i keep pressing in so live holy and godly like walk in love is very huge not apathy the world is selling us apathy because satan knows that if, if we're not walking in love we, some people are going to be condemned for not walking in love so it's disobedience to god so this is the time consciously start walking in love with people be kind even when you don't feel like pick agape love when you don't feel friendship love is the type that you have to feel agape love pick it say okay, okay i don't feel like i'm not feeling it this is how I really feel like doing, but I'm going to walk in obedience. I'm going to pick the agape love. That's the unconditional love. Okay, I, I, I can just tell you now, if you're walking in love, you're caring for people, you're living holy, you're living godly, you're spending time in God's presence, living for the Lord, taking your mind off the things of this world, pressing into God, you have nothing to fear. All these terrifying things, all these things that it says the whole world will be freaking out is for the people that are ignorant and living in sin. But if you're a child of God, there's nothing to fear. And the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this time in your presence. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you that you just comfort us so much in your word. Lord, we know that we're not going to panic as the world. Lord, because we're in right standing with, with you. Because we received your love. We're, we're sealed by your Holy Spirit. We're not taking no mark of the beast. We have the seal of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, that's the, that's the best thing on, on, ever. That's the best thing ever. And we're securing that. We're securing your love. Thank you again for the cross, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid for us. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in us and guides us and helps us not to live in sin. And thank you that you give us the grace to walk in obedience to your word. We love you so much. We celebrate you. We surrender the rest of this day. We surrender this a new day. We surrender the day to you. We entrust our lives to you, Lord. You are in control. We are in control. We just trust you. Thank you for your angels always around us, watching over us, fighting for us, shielding us, protecting us. Thank you, Lord. We're happy that we belong to you. It's the, most, it's the best gift ever we can ever have. Just having uh, we been in you and your word says you are in us. We love you so much. We celebrate you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord.